So today's session, today is the second session of our training. And uh, today's session, uh, last week, our first session was on advocacy and human rights. What is advocacy? When we talk about, uh, when we say advocacy, when we talk about uh, human rights, what are we actually, what do we actually mean? And um, and then we also had a little introduction to the UN um, um, organizations, all the different branches of the UN, and we focused a little bit uh, extra on the Human Rights Council, okay? Because ER, the Human Rights Council is based here in Geneva, and. Um, and ERI engages with it uh, in a um, in a very very uh, active way. So so today's session is on ERI's engagement with the UN human rights mechanisms. Okay, and so you're going to learn first a little bit more about uh, the different UN human rights mechanisms and then um, how ERI engages with it. <clears throat> Just a little bit of a warning um, before we start. Okay, today's session is going to be um, very, in a way, quite technical um, when we're talking about the human rights mechanisms. And there's going to be a lot of content to process. So if at any time you're feeling overwhelmed, Okay, please remember that um, you don't have to remember everything that you are seeing on the screen or everything that you are hearing. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to uh, make sure that it's there, it's there in your memory. Okay, just just uh, let it. Just let the, today's presentations flow over you. Get. The, get the overall um, uh, message of today's uh, of today's presentations. You can always go back when I share the link of the recording. You can always go back and um, and once again view it and go through uh, today's presentations at your own pace. So um, just uh, so just that little bit of a warning. Um, don't get overwhelmed by today's uh, presentation. Okay, we will have breaks in between. We have planned breaks in between the presentations to give you an opportunity to reflect on what you have heard and maybe to identify one or two key um, uh, things that stay with you okay um or key learnings all right so in that way we hope to break up this uh, uh highly uh, what we know is going to be a high content uh, training session today all right so just that little bit of uh just want to let you know that okay um, the presentations, as usual, please view them on speaker view. And during the presentation, your microphone will be disabled. It has already been disabled. Okay, and the chat box will also be disabled so that um, there are no distractions. And after, but when I do invite you to put in comments in the chat box, I will enable it uh, for you. Okay. So I think now we are uh, ready, okay? And at this stage, I'm just going to check everything before I hand over to Kevin, all right? Um, but uh, before I also hand over to Kevin, I take this opportunity, we've reached the 100 mark of participants, okay, as we start, so that's wonderful. So I want to welcome all 100 of you who are 101 now, who are present uh, for this training. And thank you, because uh, in um, uh, you'll have made time okay uh in a busy day especially now that covid restrictions have been lifted you'll are back to work uh as before covid times a full school day for those in school 
a full office day for those in office and and you have made time and and eri appreciates that okay uh, for taking time to uh, be part of this training so thank you and very welcome okay and with those few words now i'm going to hand over to kevin okay uh, to um, introduce the topic of the day and to take you through the session Kevin, your uh, microphone is muted. Can you please unmute yourself? Are you able to unmute yourself? Are you, oh, one minute, Kevin, maybe oh, one minute. I'll just make you a co-host. You're not, uh, I see somehow that moved out. Okay, one minute, okay. Just a moment. Okay, just try to unmute yourself now. That's fine, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, thank Tino. Yeah. So uh, I want to welcome everyone to this webinar, and I say good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. And we have people from right across the globe, from India, many from India, quite a few from Africa, West Africa, Kenya, Nigeria. Zambia, people from Mauritius, people from Rome, Geneva. So you're all very welcome to this webinar. And this is the second webinar in the series. So I'm going to share my screen now and just uh, do an introduction before we move on. Uh, if you go to the bottom and uh, yeah, over there, can you see it? No, no, just I have a problem getting the. Uh... All right, I, I know. Uh, getting it on slideshow. So just then beginning our presentation to remind you that Edmund Rice International is uh, sponsored by the two congregations of Christian Brothers and Presentation Brothers, and we're based here in Geneva. There's the poster for these uh, webinars, and we're now on the 6th of April, and as Tina explained already, today we're going to look at how does Edmund Rice International engage with the human rights system? And as Tino said, we're going to be doing quite a lot of content. You don't have to remember it all. Just take it in gradually. There'll be breaks along the way to allow you to make comments and ask questions. And there'll be a breakout group in the second half of the presentation where you'll meet other people that are taking part in this webinar. So engaging with the human rights system. So just to start us off then, We're going to talk about three mechanisms of the United Nations. And the first one is the Universal Periodic Review. Now this mechanism is seeking to improve the human rights situation on the ground on each of the 193 United Nations member states. Notice that it's a mechanism of the Human Rights Council. So whenever the Universal Periodic Review is taking place in Geneva, it happens before the Human Rights Council. And it's looking at the performance of each of the countries uh, of the United Nations, 193 member states that belong to the United Nations. That's the first mechanism that we'll hear about today. The second mechanism are treaty bodies. And treaty bodies are committees 
of independent experts that monitor implementation of the core international human rights treaties. There are a number of international human rights treaties that have been agreed over the years, and each of these treaties has a committee, and that committee is called a treaty body. So the second part of our presentation today will deal with treaty bodies. And the third mechanism is called special procedures. Special procedures are independent experts, human rights experts, given the task by the UN to investigate and report on human rights situations around the world. So these are individuals, independent experts appointed by the UN to look at and report on human rights situations across the world. So just take a moment to look at these three mechanisms, which we're going to hear more about now in the course of the webinar. The Universal Periodic Review, Treaty Bodies and Special Procedures. So now I'm passing back to Brother Terry Dowling, a member of the ERI team, who's going to introduce us to the Universal Periodic Review. Okay, are you able to uh, stop screen share? Not, a, not at the moment, no. Um, just press escape, press escape button. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so thank you uh, for that introduction, Kevin. And now uh, we I go to Terry, who is going to take you through the first part of the presentation. So welcome everyone. I hope you can understand my accent. I am from South Africa and I've recently arrived in Geneva here with the, with the team, the Edmund Rice team. So I am new to all this. So I'm learning just as much like you are going to learn today. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And we're going to start the slide point show. Is that okay, Tino? Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, right, so what you're seeing there is a picture of the Human Rights Council uh, conference hall in, the Gene in, in Geneva at the, uh, at the United Nations Palace here in Geneva. And then we're going to speak about the Universal Periodic Review. And that is where states review states. That is very important to take on board. States review states. It is a peer review mechanism of the Human Rights Council. Now, The, UMA, the UPR was created in 2007 through a, a uh, decision of the Human Rights Council and it was implemented for the first time in 2008. All 47 members of the Human Rights Council review the human rights situation of each member state of each 193 member state. The aim of the process is in to assure that all 193 member states of the United Nations are reviewed equally and transparently by other member states in a cooperative dialogue. So those are important words. They reviewed equally and transparently by other member states in a cooperative dialogue. So we are going to unpack the UPR a bit more. It is a unique process that reviews the human rights records of all 193 member states, as we've said. It gives all states an opportunity to demonstrate its actions to improve the human rights situation in the, in, its, in the particular country. And it gives the UN a chance to address human rights violations and to help states deal with human rights challenges. 
And it reminds states of their responsibility to fully respect all more human rights and fundamental freedoms. So to just take a look at that screen. So this is a unique process. It's the only UN mechanism where all states are reviewed periodically by other states. It is unique. It's fairly young. It only started in 2008. And what's important is the last two statements there. Other states can name and shame a particular state if it's not fulfilling its obligations in respect of human rights. And those states that are named and shamed do not like being named and shamed in front of their peers. So this is a, a unique process and a powerful process, just to, to remember that. Now, what are the UPR goals? First of all, it's universal. All 193 states of the UN are reviewed on an equal basis. It's periodic. This, place, this process takes place every four and a half years. One cycle lasts four and a half years to get through all 193 member states. It's a review, the performance in human rights obligations of all human rights are given equal attention. That's important. All human rights are given equal attention. So moving on, what are the human rights objectives? First of all, it's an improvement of the human rights situation on the ground. It's a fulfillment of the state's human rights obligations and commitments. It's an assessment of the positive developments and challenges of a particular state. It also enhances the state's capacity and technical assistance to meet its human rights obligations. It also shares good practices and it encourages full cooperation and engagement with the Human Rights Council, human rights bodies, and the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. So it's quite a broad set of objectives, this UPR mechanism. Right, now, who conducts the review? The reviews are conducted by the 47 elected members of the Human Rights Council, and they form the working group. The 47 elected members of the Human Rights Council form the working group. The other mem UN member states participate in the discussion as observer states. The state under review is assisted by three states. They are named the Troika, and they are drawn by lot. The Troika supports and challenges the state under review and ensures that the session proceeds in an orderly manner. It is important to understand that the Troika, those three states, are part of the 47 elected member states of the working group. Now, just to give an example, we have finished the third UPR cycle in March this year, and a new cycle is starting in November of this year, 2002, with a, with, with a session of the Human Rights Council. And there are three countries where Edmund Rice International is involved in through its partners on the ground. That is the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and its troika is the Ivory Coast, the Republic of Korea, and Lithuania. Another country ERI is interested in is India, and its troika will be the Sudan, Nepal, and the Netherlands. 
And the third country that is coming under review in November of this year is South Africa. And its troika will be Libya, Qatar, and Armen Armenia. These are the three countries of the 47 members that are drawn by lot to form the troika. So a question you might keep in your mind now as we go through this presentation is, why is this review known as a peer review? Just remember that, keep that in your mind. So moving on, we're going to look at this UPR cycle. Now it takes place over four and a half years in Geneva. That is one UPR cycle, four and a half years. We have gone through three UPR cycles since 2008. The third cycle finished in March of this year. So all 193 states have been reviewed over the last number of years on three, for, three to, for three reviews. Each has been reviewed three times. So to cover the 193 states, the Human Rights Council has 14 UPR working group sessions, 14. The Human Rights Council will meet three times a year. There are three sessions a year. So to, to cover all the states in one session, 42, sorry, in one session, four states are reviewed. And in one year, therefore, with three sessions, 42 states will be reviewed. And in the review session of a state, each review session lasts three and a half years. And this is through an interactive dialogue. So just to go through that again, a UPR cycle lasts four and a half years. Three cycles have been completed. A new cycle is starting in November of 2002, and that will last for four and a half years. The whole uh, program of for the four and a half years is is published on the UP on the Human Rights Council or the Office of the High Commissioner Human Rights Council website, and that can be looked at. So the Human Rights Council meets three times a year, and in a session, fourteen states are reviewed, each given three and a half hours. Every year, forty-two states are reviewed. I hope that all makes sense. So now we're going to look at what happens in a review session of a particular state under review. First of all, documents are prepared prior to the review session. These are three reports submitted to the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and given different views giving different views of the human rights situation in the state under review. The first document is a state report compiled by the state under review. And in, an, in that it states what it is doing in respect of human rights and all it undertook to do since the last UPR session, which was four and a half years prior to this. So that is the state report. The second report is a compilation from the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, and that is inputs from treaty bodies, special procedures, and other relevant documents on human rights in that particular state under review. And Brother Kevin will be talking about that a bit later. And the third important document is a compilation from relevant stakeholders civil society bodies, NGOs, like Edmund Rice International. And the Office of the High Commissioner, they summarize this and compile this report from all these civil society and NGO bodies. So for example, the three countries that are coming under review later this year in November, the UK, India, and South Africa, Edmund Rice International through its, its uh, 
um, partners on the ground. We have submitted already three submissions in respect of the UPR for those three countries already. They have been submitted in March. Then the Office of the High Commissioner will work on these documents to compile a report from all these relevant stakeholders. And these three documents are available on the website before the review session starts. So these are the three documents that are prepared prior to the review session. So now we're gonna look at a review session. First of all, as we have explained, there's the preparation of the three reports. The report of the state report of the United, and then the, the report of the United Nations bodies and the report of the civil society bodies. Then the review session takes place uh, during a human rights council's uh, session for that state under review. It's a three and a half hour session and it starts off with the state under review speaking about to its report on what it has done and what it is doing in terms of human rights in the last four and a half years. Then all states that are present in the, in the working group states, they can make observations and recommendations to the state under review. Now, very often, some of the, the working group states, those are the 47, can join with other states and make a submission or an observation and recommendations of a group of states together. Okay, and during that then, the working group makes, compiles a document on all the recommendation and observations from the state under review and the states making recommendations and observations. And during the process, the chairman can stop this and give the state under review a chance to respond. And then at the end of this, the state under review has another chance to respond. NGOs can only observe during this process, but they can in, be involved in the process prior to this review by lobbying with various states for them to take note of what they are trying to uh, take, bring to the notice of the Human Rights Council. They can lobby with states. At the end of this three, this three hour session, the working group compiles a report, which is a summary of the state under review response and all other states observations and recommendations. This is then tabled about a day or so later during the Human Rights Council session. And then the states can interact with that document and then finally it's accepted and adopted and given to the state under review. So that's the second phase. Then the third phase, which is often referred to as the UPR outcomes phase, this will take place three months or so later at the next human rights session. And it lasts about one hour. The state under review responds to that working group document of the previous phase and states what it has been doing. It states what all, all the recommendations from the other states that it, it supports, or it states the rec what recommendations it just notes. Now that's very important. It gives a, a summary of what it is doing it gives a summary of all the recommendations that it, it supports. And then it also summarize, gives a summary of all the recommendations from the other states that it just notes. This document is then adopted and accepted by the Human Rights Council. And that's the end of the review session. This document then is given to the state to work on. And then we come to the fourth phase of this 
whole cycle, which is a very important phase because that is the next four and a half years. And all relevant stakeholders participate in, in, in the implementation of the recommendations. The state under review, and then NGOs can observe what the state is doing. They can meet with the state to make recommendations. They can monitor, monitor progress and make submissions to the state. So that is a very important process for the following four and a half years. So I hope I, this gives you a, a kind of summary of the whole UPR cycle. Now, to give you an example, <clears throat> last year, <clears throat> Tanzania came up for review in November of 2001. The Troika was already selected in January of 2001 for Tanzania, and that was Bangladesh, Gabon, and the Russian Federation. In phase two, in the review, 92 delegations made recommendations. And then in phase three, Tanzania supported 108 recommendations. It said it would re examine 12 recommendations and provide responses in due time. And it noted 132 recommendations. So that document then of the, 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 the support of recommendations and noted recommendations is available. And then in the four, phase four, NGOs can work at that and work at, at monitoring the progress of the state under review. So that gives you an idea of this. I'm going to... So just to summarize again, steps two and three, the very important steps. As you know, step one is the preparation of the documents, and step two and three are the working group on the UPR. So it examines 14 states per session. Member and observer states participate in the interactive dialogue held with the SUR or the state under review, and stakeholders attend the review. That's phase two. It adopts the report containing recommendations, conclusions, and voluntary pledges. And then in the next Human Rights Council session, the state under review indicates during that session what outcomes, what recommendations are accepted, and what recommendations are noted, as I explained in the case of Tanzania. So that's just a a summary again of what we discussed in the last slide. Now to go to the final slide is where can NGOs, which is what we are all about, be involved in this whole cycle? The first is in the preparation of the reports. In the national report, the state under review is actually supposed to consult with human rights uh, um, activists and NGOs in this particular state in the preparation of that report. <coughs> NGOs can sub, uh, submit submissions in the stakeholder information. That's number, number three report. <coughs> and then in the review process, NGOs can lobby and meet with various countries before the review session. And then in the third phase, um, NGOs can make an oral submission uh, concerning the state under review on what it uh, supported and what it noted. And Edmund Rice International in the case of, of Tanzania made an oral statement in phase three, which took place in March this year. Then, during the next four and a half years, NGOs must be involved in this process. And that's awareness raising and advocacy amongst relevant stakeholders, and then monitoring and reporting on progress that of, for, in, in terms of what the state is doing. So that gives you an idea of how NGOs are involved in this whole process. So I hope this has explained the UPR mechanism and the whole cycle of meetings, etc. My final slide 
is to just give you some resources. Number one and two are very informative YouTube videos on number one is the UPR cycle, and number two is where NGOs can be involved. And the third one is a, a website where you can check on your own country in terms of the UPR process. So these will be all recorded so you can access them later. So that ends my session on the UPR cycle. So thank you everybody for